In June of 2021, we set off on an adventure across North America to visit ancient archaeological sites all around the United States. From Oregon, we drove east for several days, over mountain ranges, across vast desert plains, through lightning storms and intense weather with tornadoes forming, and across state lines to make it to the legendary Serpent Mound on the summer solstice. It's one of the most fascinating ancient sites found anywhere in the world, and many people come here every year on the summer solstice to see the spectacular cosmic alignment of the sun setting into the mouth of the serpent. As life would have it, we arrived at the end of the three-day solstice window during a rainstorm to find that the park is actually closed on Mondays. So after sitting in the rain at the entrance for a little while, feeling rather disappointed, we decided to go get a hotel for the night. Serpent Mound is one of North America's most mysterious and magnificent ancient sites still remaining today. It's a 1,350 foot long ancient effigy mound in the shape of a serpent, with a coiled tail, winding body, and a head that has many theories proposed about its intended form. The large oval object, which is 120 feet or 37 meters long, could be the actual head of the snake, the eye of the snake, the snake swallowing the sun, or swallowing an egg, or a depiction of the cosmological story of the first woman represented by the vulvoid, the snake, and the frog, which symbolizes the cycles of life and death. There are many ancient effigy mounds around the world, such as the Blythe Intaglios in California, Rock Hawk, and Rock Eagle in Georgia, all three of which we visited and we'll have videos on at some point, the Nazca Lines in Peru, the Uffington White Horse in England, and the Atacama Giant in Chile. There are also other serpent effigies, such as the Kansas Serpent Intaglio, the Stone Serpent in Kentucky, the Rice Lake Serpent Mound in Canada, and the Loch Ness Serpent in Scotland. National Geographic called Serpent Mound one of the great wonders of the ancient world, and Ephraim Squire and Edwin Davis, prominent archaeologists of the 1800s, referred to it as probably the most extraordinary earthwork thus far discovered. Brad Lepper, one of the lead archaeologists today in Ohio affirmed that it deserves the respect of the world and that it should be listed alongside the pyramids of Egypt and the Great Wall of China. The serpent was carefully constructed in some parts with a base layer of stone and in other parts with a mixture of clay and ash. Overall, it's a thoroughly built construction meant to withstand heavy rains and last through the ages. It's pretty incredible that this effigy is still in such great condition after all it's endured throughout the centuries. The head of the snake approaches a cliff overlooking Brush Creek, a small waterway in the forest below. From down in the creek, you can see that Serpent Mound was built on top of a rock outcropping that resembles a snake. It's possible that the ancient people who built the mound recognized a natural serpent shape in this ridge and built their sacred monument on top of it in reverence of this natural formation. Many see this rock outcropping as the true head of the serpent, and as you can see, it does look like a snake head to this day. This ridge sits within a giant 300 million year old meteor impact crater, around seven miles or 11 kilometers in diameter. Could the builders of Serpent Mount have been aware of this crater, and did they choose it as the location of their effigy because they could sense some natural power dwelling in the landscape? On June 22nd, the sun was out, and we were blessed with the opportunity to visit the Great Serpent and see it for ourselves. Upon arrival, we first encountered three burial mounds near the parking area, which contain burials made by different cultures that lived here throughout the ages, including the Fort Ancient, Intrusive Mound, Hopewell, and Adena cultures, and even dating back into the Archaic period. After walking around these small mounds, we entered the gift shop and museum, which holds artifacts from throughout the long history at this site, as well as a few other sites in the area. The museum displays arrowheads, axes, pottery, projectile points, drills, scrapers, knives, and other artifacts. As you can see in this model of the conical mound that we saw out front, there were quite a number of people buried in there. The lowest burials date to the Adena period, more than 2,000 years ago, and hundreds of years later, the intrusive mound culture buried several more people in the same mound, perhaps to connect with the lineage and sacred sites of their ancestors. Squire and Davis, who were the first archaeologists to document and survey the site in 1848, detailed their findings in their historic book, Ancient Monuments of the Mississippi Valley, which is one of the greatest contributions to North American archaeology and is definitely worth checking out, 
We link the full text in the description below. Frederick Putnam, the first director of Harvard University's Peabody Museum in the 1860s, helped develop Serpent Mound into a historical site in order to restore and preserve it after damages made from plowing and agriculture. He carried out major excavations in the late 1880s and purchased the 60-acre site on behalf of the trustees of the Peabody Museum, which was later granted ownership to what is now the Ohio History Connection, which manages the site today. After studying the site's long history for a while, we left the museum and approached the Great Serpent, and we were filled with excitement as it came into view. We immediately climbed the 25-foot tower to get an overhead perspective. From up here, you get a majestic view of the whole serpent, with its tail coiled nearby to the southwest and its head pointing northwest far in the background. When Frederick Putnam first visited the site, he said that the most singular sensation of awe and admiration overwhelmed me. There seemed to come to me a picture as of a distant time, of a people with strange customs, and with it came the demand for an interpretation of this mystery. The unknown must become known. So it turns out that this metal tower was built more than a hundred years ago in 1908, and it's still standing strong today. After enjoying the view from up above, we went down and circled the serpent a few times on the walkway, trying to get the best views from the ground and also feel into the meaning and purpose of such a magnificent effigy. We circled around the tail but could not go into the center coil, although there used to be a staircase that unceremoniously covered part of the tail and allowed people access to walk on top of the body of the serpent. The staircase was removed several years ago in what we heard was a rather destructive manner, and as you can see here, it clearly left a scar that's still visible on the mound today. It's hard to imagine why it was ever cemented into the serpent in the first place, and we're glad that it's gone. There are many theories about the coiled nature of the tail, some giving it a significant purpose as a symbolic portal to the underworld. Based on ethno-historic data, there are scholars who conclude that many native cultures saw the Great Serpent as the guardian of the Milky Way Path of Souls, the realm of the dead, and was associated with death, darkness, water, fertility, femininity, and plant growth. Walking around the serpent, you can really see how large the body is. It averages a width of 25 feet and a height of 4 feet, and it's more than a quarter of a mile long. The seven coils bend in a meandering path along the ridge, and a sign at the site shows that there was potentially an additional eighth coil that may have existed at some point in the past. A magnetic gradient survey was done in 2012, revealing changes in the magnetic properties of the soil and unmasking a U-shaped feature in the earth. It could have been erased in times of antiquity, possibly by the original builders who changed the design, or even by a later culture. The head of the serpent seems to approach the trees as if slithering away into the forest, and it isn't immediately apparent that there's a cliffside just beyond its gaze. We were careful to stay off the mound and observe the artistry from afar. As magical as the sacred spot is, we found it ironic that the silent moments of admiration were oddly contrasted by the loud sounds of the lawnmower man cutting the grass. The form of the serpent's head today is not necessarily what it originally would have looked like. As you can see in these modern LiDAR scans, there have been elements of the head that are missing today, like these two small round mounds that were speculated to be either horns or wings on the back of the head, which may have represented the horned serpent of Native American legend. The triangular shaped mound in front of the head that is visible today is also different in shape to what these artists in the 1800s depicted, which looked more like a frog leaping from an extended jaw of the serpent, forming an outer ring around the oval object. But those features are no longer visible, and the modern path for tourists encroaches on the serpent in a way that could be hiding its original form. There also used to be a rock pile that may have served as an altar in the center of the oval, which Putnam described as showing signs of fire, at some time in the early 1800s, people dug underneath the altar and threw some of the stones over the cliffside while seeking buried treasure. The rest of the stones were removed at some point for reasons we're not clear about. The oval and direction of the head gets even more profound and mysterious when you become aware that the serpent points directly at the setting sun on the summer solstice, showing that the ancient builders utilized precise astronomy to achieve this alignment. The solstice is usually around June 21st, but this year it was around 10 p.m. Ohio time on the 20th. 
Since it was raining on the 21st when we arrived, we didn't get a chance to see the alignment on that day. Luckily, the solstice window lasts about three days, so on the 22nd, when the weather was clear, we had an almost perfect opportunity to see this cosmic alignment, which was a spectacular sight to see. Since operating drones is not allowed in the park itself, we explored the area nearby and happened to randomly venture up a dirt road that led to a place called Soaring Eagle Retreat, which is owned by a non-profit organization called Friends of Serpent Mound. Unbeknownst to us, their annual solstice festival had just ended on the 20th, which we unfortunately missed, but we happened to show up just in time to help them finish breaking down. They welcomed us with open arms and we were able to fly our drone there, capturing this epic time-lapse of the sun setting right into the gaze of the serpent. Witnessing this cosmic alignment at the sacred and ancient site was a special experience for us and we were filled with wonder and gratitude as we saw this unfolding of the marriage of heaven and earth. The solstice alignment is widely accepted by academics, but there are many more solar and lunar alignments that the ancient builders potentially encoded into the effigy. The solar alignments include both the sunrise and sunset on the summer and winter solstices, and the spring and fall equinoxes. The lunar alignments appear to be even more precisely aligned, as we learned while making this video. The website moonatserpentmound.org is full of amazing information about this, so we recommend you go check out their site. They show that the three eastward pointing curves in the body of the serpent align to the minimum and maximum points on the horizon, where the full moon rises on the solstices and equinoxes throughout its 18.6 year cycles. It's also widely accepted that there's a true north alignment going from the tip of the spiral tail to the hinge of the mouth. We checked it with Google Earth, drawing a line from the north pole to the tail, and it seemed to line up pretty darn well. Building the serpent as a giant solar and lunar calendar that mirrors the movements of the heavens on the Earth would require an astronomical precision of an extremely high order, and achieving this in any capacity is absolutely mind-blowing. Some researchers draw a correlation between the Great Serpent and the constellation Scorpius, which rises due south of Serpent Mound at sunset on the summer solstice. Both have a coiled tail, and Scorpius is on the plane of the ecliptic and appears to swallow the sun through its open mouth on its journey across the sky every year. There are also a number of ancient Native American legends that tell of a celestial serpent chasing after and swallowing the sun. Others correlate the shape of the serpent's body to mimic the pattern of the stars in the constellation Draco, which has historically been depicted as a snake or dragon. There are also theories that perhaps the serpent was built to commemorate the occurrence of an eclipse at some point, or even in order to memorialize the passing of Halley's Comet in 1066 CE. The history of Serpent Mound is shrouded in mystery, and the age of its origin is still debated today. The two main theories about it are that it was originally built by the Adena culture more than 2,000 years ago, or that it was built by the Fort Ancient culture around 950 years ago. To this day, there's much disagreement among scholars, and we still do not have a definitive answer to the question of who built it and when. We have included many PDFs in the description from different researchers and archaeologists that go over this debate in great detail and outline their arguments for both sides. While we flew our drone at Soaring Eagle Retreat, we had the pleasure of meeting Jeffrey Wilson, one of the most knowledgeable people regarding ancient mounds that we had met on our journey. We spoke with him for some hours, and we recorded this short interview with him that sums up the ongoing debate about the true age of Serpent Mound. If you want to see the full six and a half minute interview, click the link in the upper right hand corner of this video, or the link is in the description below. So we have a very, very long prehistory of uh, occupation at Serpent Mound. And the question is, when was Serpent Mound constructed? So in the early 1990s, an archeologist from the Ohio History Connection, his name is Dr. Brad Lepper, he and two uh, amateurs um, excavated through the central coil pointing to the west at Serpent Mound. And that bend, produced three carbon dates. Two carbon dates were dated to between 900 uh, and 1000 AD, and the third carbon date was 800 BC. Now, Dr. Lepper threw out the 800 BC date, said it wasn't relevant, 
and took the other two dates and attributed them to the Fort Ancient culture. And so all the signs got rewritten, the narrative got rewritten, that Serpent Mound was constructed by the Fort Ancient people. However, it appears that Leper got his carbon dates, his later carbon dates, from upper layers of the mound, which we now know was when Harvard reconstructed the Serpent Mound in the 1880s, they scraped up all the dirt alongside the serpent and piled it up on top. And so the upper layers of the Serpent Mound are the reconstructed portion of the earthwork. And it appears he got those dates from that backfill and not from the original core of the mound. So then in 2011 and 2012, Dr. William Romain and several other archaeologists from Indiana University and from other uh, archaeological firms here in Ohio got together and they did something called the Serpent Mound Project. During the Serpent Mound Project, Indiana University did a number of cores from the top of the mound until they hit bedrock. So they just did a core all the way down and they did that in 17 places along the bend of the serpent. And in that coring, they found seven places where they could do carbon dating from the very base layer of the mound, from the actual core of the original serpent. And the median age for those seven carbon dates came back at about 321 BC during the Adena era. So as far as we can tell, Serpent Mound was constructed during the Adena era. It was not constructed before that. The mound appears to be constructed at that time. Now, it could be that Fort Ancient Peoples, we know that they were here. They could have renovated the serpent. They could have, you know, patched it back up during their period of time and used it for their own cultural purposes. But they came along over 1,300 years after Serpent Mound was built. In contrast to Jeffrey's views, Brad Lepper debates William Romaine's findings, saying that their conclusions from their core samples do not provide enough evidence to make the claim that the mound was built by the Adena culture. He believes the core samples taken by his colleague Robert Fletcher are more indicative of the age of the mound, and believes that it was the Fort Ancient culture who built it. Lepper suggests that the iconography of Serpent Mound is similar to that of the paintings in Picture Cave in Missouri, which date to between 950 and 1025 AD, and also argues that effigy mounds were more prominent in later cultures. He concludes that the artistic style of Serpent Mound is more representative of the style of the Fort Ancient culture rather than the Adena culture. William Romaine and others speak to the fact that Serpent iconography does date back to the early woodland period, and there are sufficient contextual examples of serpents in the Adena culture, as well as a number of burials from that period that were found with snakes buried alongside human bodies in a ritualistic manner, showing that they did hold the serpent as a sacred spiritual symbol. The great serpent's role as the lord of the underworld and guardian of the realm of the dead in Native American cosmology is consistent across many nations for thousands of years. We wonder then if the Adena people did build Serpent Mound, and perhaps the Fort Ancient people were imitating and adopting their ancestors' spiritual and artistic depictions of the Great Serpent. This plateau does have a very long history of occupation by different cultures going all the way back into the Archaic period, which was between 1000 and 8000 BC. The famous author Graham Hancock, in his latest book, America Before, speculates that the cultural impetus for the creation of Serpent Mound could reach far back into prehistory, and perhaps even into the last ice age more than 13,000 years ago. His theory is that the knowledge of astronomy, the spiritual beliefs, and cosmological framework of the Adena, as well as their successors, could have been passed down from a more ancient culture now lost to history. In 2017, there was another radiocarbon dating survey done when the Ohio History Connection removed the stairs that went over the tail. In this process, they also discovered the remnants of an older staircase and got a clear view of the stratified soil composition of the mound. They took radiocarbon samples from this exposed area and got results that Brad Lepper corroborates with the dates given by Robert Fletcher, anywhere between 660 and 1302 AD, a time concurrent with the Fort Ancient culture. 
Near the parking area, archaeological digs revealed two layers of overlapping villages, containing stone tools, projectile points, pottery shards, animal bones, charcoal, and other artifacts that date back to both the Adena and the Fort Ancient periods, so they both clearly had a strong presence in this region. It is also very likely that there were renovation projects to rebuild the layers of earth on Serpent Mound throughout the centuries, so the snake could have taken different forms during those eras, like how a snake sheds its skin through various incarnations. So basically, who knows who built it? Ultimately, nobody can say for sure, and it may take years of thorough and careful study before we can determine the age of Serpent Mound with certainty. This whole debate would take a long time to cover in full, so we'll just leave it at that, but make sure you check out the links in the description if you want to dive deeper. To add more confusion to the mix, still others say that it could be even thousands of years older than the Adena, dating back to the Archaic period and beyond. Ross Hamilton, who correlates the serpent to the constellation of Draco, thinks it could have been built more than 5,000 years ago, at a time when the star Thuban in the constellation Draco was the pole star. Some people believe it was built by a Native American race of giants. Others believe that aliens built the mound. The popular and rather absurd TV show Ancient Aliens has their own theory that it was a landing site so aliens could refill their spaceship with the rare element Iridium, which is in abundance in this region due to the extraterrestrial impact that formed this crater. This site attracts many people from a wide spectrum of beliefs who come here seeking a sacred connection to the powerful energies of the Earth, often coming here for rituals, chanting, meditation, ceremonies, and to view solar eclipses. Unfortunately, the site has also been prone to vandalism. In 2012, a group of self-proclaimed light warriors came to Serpent Mound to bury what they claimed were hundreds of crystals and organite pieces into the body of the serpent in order to quote-unquote lift the vibration of the earth so we can all rise together. An investigation ensued and they faced jail time and a $5,000 fine. In 2015, an intoxicated man decided to go four-wheeling in his truck and left damaging tire marks on top of the largest burial mound here. He faced criminal charges, probation, had to pay more than $4,000 in penalties, and was ordered to perform 100 hours of community service here at the site. It's strange and sad to see such a valuable part of human history treated with such disrespect, and we feel it's important to visit Serpent Mound with reverence and curiosity in order to preserve it for future generations and to honor the ancestral people who built it. The Shawnee tribe may be the closest living relatives to the people who built Serpent Mound. They were evicted from their homeland in Ohio almost 200 years ago and have been recently invited by the Ohio History Connection to come back to Serpent Mound and reclaim the site as their cultural heritage. Interestingly, we also read in this book that some Hopi tribe members state that their ancestors may have built the mound while on their vast journeys across the continent. Serpent Mound is truly one of the world's most fascinating archaeological sites and sits as one of America's most iconic wonders. It encodes a cosmological story of creation, profound astronomical knowledge, and a harmonic calendar of solar and lunar cycles within its design. Witnessing the summer solstice there was a very memorable and special experience for us, and we definitely recommend you go visit it if you're ever in Ohio. We spent many hours exploring the site and enjoyed several days of visiting many other archaeological sites in the nearby region. We look forward to returning someday to witness this majestic and awe-inspiring bridge between earth and sky again. Maybe we'll see you there. We hope you enjoyed this video and all of the hard work we put into making it. If you have any interesting thoughts or additional information on the site that we didn't cover, please leave a comment down below. Oh, and make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and share all of our videos with your friends. We really appreciate all your support, and it goes a long way in helping us to grow as a channel and to continue to produce more educational content. Thank you so much for watching, and take care, everybody. We'll see you in the next video.